Member for Port Moody, Coquitlam. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Global warming, climate change, there is no issue that will affect more people on this planet in our lifetimes. We spend a lot of time talking in the House. We talk about the bills that we're bringing forward. We talk about the challenges that we face. But we don't spend enough time here in the House putting our thoughts and our words to the most important problem that humanity faces. We know about climate change, but we can't see it until we see the disasters, the wildfires that burn out of control, the storms, the floods that destroy lives and communities. These disasters are happening with increased frequency, but apparently not frequently enough for us to collectively, globally, put forward the resources that are needed to deal with this problem. So today, I'm going to take us all on a little journey of what our future looks like here in BC, according to the latest projections, if we don't take action. The year is 2050. The temperature outside is warm. In fact, it's warm almost every day. More than half of the days of the year, the temperature reaches 18 degrees Celsius. Today, that happens 49 days of the year on average. The air conditioner is probably on, and the average energy needed to cool your home is six times greater than it was in 2017. If it's a nice day, you can go to the beach, but the beach might not be there, eroded away by rising oceans or more frequent storms. And if you look up to the mountains, you may not see any snow. The average snowpack in the summer will, will be 11 centimeters compared to 73 centimeters today. This, of course, will mean less water for our rivers and streams. Our wild salmon may find that, that when they return to the rivers, the rivers are too low and too warm, making it harder and harder to sustain salmon populations with each passing year. And the low flow in our rivers and streams means less water, replenishing our reservoirs in the spring and the summer, less drinking water, less ability for our dams to store energy. Yet in the fall, there's 30% there's more rain than we see today. And when it rains, it rains a lot harder. The wettest days can be 60% more wet. And which can mean a lot more flooding. In order to protect against the flooding, we'll need to have spent at least $10 billion to upgrade the dikes in Metro Vancouver alone, a heavy cost to the taxpayer, but a fraction of what it would cost if we had a major flood. Today we have rare flood events, one in 500 year events, but these events will happen much more frequently in 2050 with more probability. And if it does occur, it could cause $20 billion worth of damages to homes, businesses, public infrastructure, and interruption of cargo shipments. And although there's more rain in the fall, there's less in the summer, 20% less than today. And the dry spells will be 20% longer. This will make things harder in many ways for BC farmers. Although the growing season is longer, more droughts will mean lower crop yields. And warmer winters mean more pests will survive. And of course, there's going to be more wildfires. As you know, this year, the provincial government spent more than $500 million combating wildfires that burned 1.2 million hectares of land and ensured damages topped 127 million and 50,000 people were forced out of their homes. In 2050, the fires will be bigger. They'll be more expensive to fight, and the damages will be more costly. Insurance costs have been based on historic patterns, and all of this is going to be thrown on its head. Increasing severity of extreme events will increase insurance costs to homeowners, business owners, farmers, and many others. Insurable damages across the country 
last year for wildfires, floods, and severe weather reached almost $5 billion. This cost will keep rising exponentially. Back in the 70s, the federal government spend, spent $40 million on disaster relief. Recent numbers hit $1.4 billion. Just imagine what the cost will be in 2050 if we don't act today. This is just a little snapshot of what life will be like in BC in 2050, and life in many other places in the world will be much worse. We have to act. All of us, in every part of the world, in every level of government, in every business from small to large, we need to take action. We can't wait any longer. Thank you.